I would need to address the elephant in the room because the chat's doing it too. We are nine games into this season, and Lucas Reichel doesn't have a point. Yeah. And I, I'm – look, I'm patient. You, for, since the inception of CHGO Blackhawks, we have preached patience with development. We have said it's going to take time. You're going to have to go through some growing pains, yada, yada, yada. There's no way a player with that skill level should go nine games without a point. That's almost impossible. You're right. And – but he, he – He's playing well defensively. He's getting better. He's doing all the things a center needs to do except driving the offense. But as I mentioned it, and I'm not making excuses for having no points yet, but I'm not ex- exactly sure how he's supposed to get points with some of these line mates he's got. Well, he's a guy that creates offense, but then he looks to his left or right, and there's Taylor Radish. Can't keep up with him. You know, it, I'm just saying, though, you're right. There, that's valid. But in 1459 of ice time, he had one shot. Yeah, it's unacceptable. Like, it's got to be better. And Connor Bedard spent a lot of this year playing with Ryan Donato. Let's, uh, Phil Kurashev isn't exactly uh, Mario Lemieux out there. Like, at some point, it feels like we're making excuses for Reichel. And, like, the way he looked at the end of last year, he looked terrific. He looked like the guy we thought they were drafting. He looked like the guy we all thought he was going to be. He happened to be playing wing then. Is the center thing, is it too soon? I don't know. I'm not the coach. I'm not the GM. All I know is, at some point, Lucas Reichel, who has been a scorer his entire life, is going to look at that score sheet and go, my God, I don't have a point. And every game that goes by where he doesn't score is a shot on his confidence. And it seems like at some point, the more they let him struggle... And the more they let him continue this without making some sort of adjustment, the worse it could get. Because if they say, let's say their magic number is 15 games to try him at center, and he goes 15 games without a point, are you beyond the point of return at then? Like, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. I really don't. But they've got to do something to get him going. Either put him on the first power play, with Bedard. I would I said that like five games ago. Yeah. That they, could get him some confidence. They they put him on at the end of the what's game. What's the difference? That pot, that unit basically plays one fifty five of every power play. Anyway. Exactly. Yeah. They don't get off the ice. Yeah. So they, put him out there. Well, and that's we talked about this last game too, is if power play one's gonna be out there the entire power play, then maybe you do gotta get Korchinski on power play one and Reichel on power play one because it's not producing. Right. It's out there and they've got puck pre- possession and they're moving it around. They're hitting posts. They're getting shots that go wide. They're getting shots saved, but nothing's going in. Fine. If you're going to play them for the entire power play, load it up. Load it up with all your offensive firepower and see what happens. A power play goal could open the – like get him gripping the stick a little And even if even if he's scoring on the power play and not scoring at five on five, at least in his mind, he is still producing. He's adding – he's contributing. Yes, and the the five on five will come, but – I think you just can't keep having him go out game after game, night after night, with zeros across the board. So there's two solutions, possible solutions. You could start as early as Saturday. And we'll get an idea at practice this week. Do you, A, scrap him at center and put him on the wing, put him up with Bedard, or do you keep him at center and put him with Kershev and Anthony Siu, the trio that looked so good at the end of the last year. I know we've been dogging Anthony Siu t- today. But he's here for two years. But that line looked really good last year, and it looked really good in training camp before Kershev got hurt and Anthony Siu got sick. Those are your two options right now. You have to do one of those two things. I agree. Here's what I do. And, and if you want to, if, if Luke and Kyle are looking for a way to say this to Luke, Lucas where it doesn't feel like he failed at center, say, look, uh, with Taylor Hall out, we need a top six winger with Bedard. You are our best option. So until Taylor Hall's back, we're moving you back up to wing on the top line. And then when Taylor comes back, we'll figure out what we're going to do with you at center. Because then you also free him up. When that happens, you could have Bedard, Hall, and Felino. Then you could have the line you mentioned, Kurashev, Reichel, with Anasiu. Fine. But right now, they've got to find a way to get him going. With the Taylor Hall injury, you have an excuse. Because you have to get a legit top six up there 
with Bedard. It can't be up to him to produce all the offense every game, and he's done a pretty good job at it. We all city like the mayor. 